Well, what's up, everybody? And we are on the Grom today. I'm going to do like a full walk around, kind of tell you what I did to make this more capable off-roading. But yeah, well, let's go and get into it. Okay, so here we are. Like I said before, this is my 2018 Grom. It only has like 1,500 miles on it. I've had it for eh, probably about three years now. And this is what it looks like. Kind of made it off-road-ish. It's pretty capable. Nothing too fancy. But for the most part, it gets the job done. <laughs> but yeah, let's walk through this thing. So I'm going to start off with the mods that are mostly off-road related. I've done other stuff that doesn't really affect the off-road performance. So I'll go into those later. So to start up is the biggest thing that you see probably is probably the knobbies on this. So these are the Maxxis M60 24s with a 120 size and then 130. It's super cheap for both pair. They're about $100. And they're great on the street and off-road. I was worried about getting knobbies on the street because it's like it's such a small bike. How it would handle on the road might be really bad with the knobbies, but hey, it's actually not too bad. It, I feel safe enough on this thing, as much safe as you can be with a small bike. And they do the job. They handle dirt and mud quite well for a 12-inch wheel. Can't do much better than that. I mean, it's a very well-known brand, so you won't go wrong with them. Next up is this front fender. It's a fiberglass fender, supposedly off-road, um, off eBay or like MSX accessories and whatnot. Fitment kind of sucks, as you can see. I did I do electrical tape just to make sure because sometimes it moves like that. I don't want that hitting the tires. Uh, because down here, I don't know if you can see, there's a screw there. I had to kind of make it work. It's not really holding it. Right now, I need to tie it again. Um, but just the fitment and stuff, it, it's it's not the best. But, I mean, it looks way better. The stock fenders would cake up mud underneath and just stock, uh, stop your front tires. So this is what helps that. It looks good. Good enough quality. Um, next up is probably the handguards. These are the Zeta uh, drop-down handguards. Um, I bought them as a kit on eBay for like $100, but now you have to like buy them separately. So you buy the bars separate and then the protectors. You can get different protectors, like different styles. I'll link both in the description. But they work really well. Before, I didn't have handguards and I messed up my brake lever. No biggie. It's a cheap one. But these have been a lifesaver so whenever you're, you crash off road or whatnot, it, it saves your lever so you can still ride and all the trees and whatnot bushes you get into. Not a big deal. As you can see, it's had a hefty rough life. Um, next up, let's see. Uh, probably the Kalex 110 bars. These have been tremendous for me. This is the first thing that I did to this bike. The stock bars are like super high up and um, it felt weird. And for off-roading, you definitely need these cro the crossbar. If you don't have that, your bars will just bend after so many bumps. You don't want that. So those are cheap to $60 and fit exactly OEM. It's a 7 8 bar. Um, I would say the feel is a little bit it feels more of a real bike than the stock bars feel more like a toy. So this helps it give it that bigger bike feel, even though, I mean, it's a 125cc. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. For off-roading. Next one probably would be these, the Two Brothers Racing foot pegs. Uh, these help me so much. I should have got them a lot sooner uh, than I did. They're one of the later mods that I got. Uh, they're like $100. I got them for $80 it was on sale, so but they're like $100 now. The, it feels so much better than the stock ones. Like if you're off-roading, you need those uh, because one, it has these the little spikes, if you want to call it there. Not really spikes, but it just helps grip and like get rid of the mud. 
that's on your boots and whatnot and because the stock ones they have that rubber and so it, it's nice for road use and whatnot but man once you hit a bump or try to stand up on your bike off-roading you just feel this uneasiness and it, it doesn't feel secure at all and if you get mud on it your foot just slips off so you don't want that while off-roading and it's nice you just replace the stock foot bag like normal nothing no modification works as normal next up uh, we'll go with the cage uh, this is a Kevtech made uh, both front and rear so front cage and then they call it sub cage uh, but got in red of course gotta match the bike <laughs> then back here I got the scrape bar and foot rest if I ever got into stunting just in case it was like $80 more so I'm like eh what the heck I'll go and get it I'm already spending this much money for it um, both stock without the foot peg and the scrape bar if you just got this and the front it's like 250 each so $500 um, this adds 80 so until it's like 580 something like that for both or it might be 60 more I don't know but it's a little bit over 500 for both um, it's a plus and minus it saves you on some crashes but then the other thing you have to think about is um, if you hit something so hard and stuff it happens like for um, what do you call like on street bikes the frame sliders that just stick out um, like for track riding if you low side and stuff if you low side and whatnot and your peg catches something on the ground like say dirt like it gets stuck um, that will bend up and it's going to bend your engine bolt which is no bueno this one definitely a lot more secure than just that so it might be different for off-road it might be totally fine like no issue whatsoever I've crashed on this three times um, I admit it, I mean, off-roading, I suck out off-roading, that's why I don't do too much, but I'm short, so I can't ride those bigger bikes that are actually meant for good stuff, so this is, I want to get like a 110 or a 125 um, bigger bike, so I'm able to hit more stuff per se, um, I'm not trying to jump or do anything too crazy, I just want to have a little bit more fun, this is kind of limiting, of course, because of the ground clearance that's next up, um, so the exhaust, I'm going to clear off-roading because, well, mine, not the best for off-roading. As you can see, it's had quite the life. Nice little skid crash there, and then all the bottoming out of hitting rocks. And so, for exhaust, uh, there's a lot like the Zoom that's a whole lot cheaper than a freaking carbon fiber mistake that I made was getting a carbon fiber thinking oh I'm not gonna crash this thing uh, I'll off-road it it'll be fine <laughs> mistake number one uh, zoom exhaust like others uh, the, the can actually mounts up here it goes behind and right here only thing that sucks is that the pipes are still right here so you still have the issue of when you're hitting bumps if there's a rock you still have that super low ground clearance that's only problem with these bikes is the ground clearance but I mean it's a tiny bike where you gonna expect but I mean hey the exhaust sounds good has no baffle in it it's fun it still works surprisingly at how beat it. it's held up great so it's taking some huge crashes um, if you've been following me for a while I crashed out in the mountains and um, I tore my oh wait, I forgot what name it was it's, it's been a while but my shoulder, I, I tore my ligament in my shoulder, and uh, that was fun. That was a fun ride back down the mountain, <laughs> to say the least. But I've seen people, uh, seen groms with them, that they modify it where the exhaust goes up here, and there's no, like, pipe down, like, it comes up here. It's like, you have to get it custom made. So, besides that fact, I mean, if you can get a high mount exhaust, you still have the problem that your exhaust is going to stick out. Maybe it's not as much if you have the cage and both. It might save it in the event of a crash, but there's no guarantee. Let's see. And also for the high mount exhaust, I forgot, with a sub cage, it won't work unless you do some modification or whatnot. It probably won't fit the same because I was wanting to get those dual ones because it looks so cool. But I'm like, 
I want the cage more. <laughs> but that's about it for what I have for off-roading purposes uh, for the most part. There's two items that are still on my list to do uh, to test out and just see if I can improve the handling of this bike a little bit more. Uh, starting up front, of course the suspension is just, it just bottoms out on everything. It kind of makes it fun, but it's a little dangerous too. Uh, Olin's makes a cartridge kit, um, it's called FDK Triple Eleven. I think it was like 111 It's like $275, and it replaces the internals, and supposedly it improves handling, how it travels, all that fun stuff, so I mean, it might improve, uh, well it's definitely an improvement over stock, so that might help with it feeling like a pogo stick every time you hit a bump. So that's on the to-do list. If anyone has that done to their Grom, leave in comments how you like it, because I really want to do that. I think that would help the bike handling both street and off-road a lot. And then the mod that I see a lot of people do in the rear is the, it's called the YSS shock. It's black with red um, spring. It looks really cool. It would match the bike perfectly, but I think that one's about $200. Uh, it would help it, definitely. I've heard mixed reviews. Uh, some people say it feels the same as stock, then some people like glorify it. it's the best thing ever, best mod, need to do it. So it's it's a hit and miss. It's kind of like you gotta try it for yourself. So I'll definitely give it a shot eventually when I just don't have anything else to do. I'll just get that, replace it, test out, and do a review. Let me know if you're interested in that. Love to try out. But that's pretty much for off roading how you can probably make it a lot better compared to stock. It definitely has improved since stock. For having the more clearance up front, you don't have the fender, hand guards, the tires is the biggest thing for off-roading. You you kind of have to have knobbies. You can't run those slicks. If you hit mud, you're just you're a goner. <laughs> and the pegs. So I say my top three mods for uh, that's tough. Yeah, top three mods for off-roading. I would say the tires. Probably the pegs and uh, handlebars, yeah. So tires, pegs, handlebars. So that's pretty much it. Uh, a little performance, I guess this kind of ties in with both. It's helpful for both street and off-road, but um, I did the 14 tooth sprocket from JT. Um, as the stock is 15, so improved acceleration. Uh, a little torque. I mean, it makes what eight, nine horsepower bike, so it's not going to be crazy fast. But it, it feels a lot better. It feels like it's picking up. The when I had it stock, the gearing felt very sluggish to me. A lot of people might relate to that. Um, but that definitely helped. It was the cheapest mod ever. I didn't have to even change the chain. Still use the stock length and everything. S super easy mod. So now I'm just going to go into the cosmetics kind of of what looks like now and this isn't really off-road related but it's kind of like just the overview of the bike. So I'm going to start from the front to the rear. Uh, starting up front I got the TST integrated lights. It's like $16 for a pair. I, TST makes really good products. You won't go wrong and uh, you can get a relay for it so it um, doesn't rapid blink if you care about that. Next up is the fork wrap, which you can see I did an okay-ish, not really, job on it. But for photos and just afar, so it looks great, so that's what matters, right? Um, it's from Blue Ridge Decals. Everything's going to be linked in the description, so check them out. It's like $30 for both, so it definitely improves the look of it if you're going for that look. They have like white, blue, pretty much any color, pretty much. Uh, next up is the pegs. I'll include both of these. They're both from 50 Stunt. The front ones are their stubbies, which are like finger length. It's like, it's like 1.75 inches. And then the rear is uh, 2.5. It's their jumbo. It's longer, so it's better for the rear. I didn't want huge sticking out of the front because if I'm going through bushes and something or a tree and it's too wide out compared to what I'm used to, it might hit that and then take me out so I didn't think it'd be a big deal on the rear since it's kind of like lines up with the bike so I'm not really widening my frame even though I'll probably catch something with my cage versus those but 
I don't know. It's just personal preference. I didn't want something big just hang in there. And then next up, coming up on the handlebars, is the RSC clutch. And this thing's just amazing. Everyone who's had one knows. As Jake would say, I mean, it's literally the best clutch. I mean, the ball bearing in here is, is just super easy. It's $130. This is the full length. I didn't like the shorty because sometimes I do like using two or three fingers. Um, but you can still use it with just one finger. Super easy pull. Makes the bike feel a lot better. Shifting is super easy. So they make so many different types now. So you can do whatever you prefer. But that one was $130. And then over here I have the what you call the MZS brake lever. I got a pair that had the clutch but I was already going to use that. So I just used the brake lever. They're like $40. Something like that for the pair. Uh, and I mean... They're a cheaper lever. There's different types of them. Like you don't have to get this one. I think this is called their like no slip. It's a little bit more jagged, so the other one's like more smooth. I got this because so it kind of fit like the edginess of this bike of how it's like more modern. And also for off-roading and stuff, if mud gets there, it's a lot easier grip than a smoother lever. Um, next up is the grips. These are the driven D-axis. And if you've been following me for a little bit, these are on all my bikes. These are my favorite grips ever. Um, they just feel great. They're cheap. They look good. The anodizing holds up. On my R3, I've had the same pair for, gosh, let's see, what was it? Probably like three or four years, and it still looks the same, like brand new. Next up is probably the integrated tail light. Uh, it's called, I think it's an MDH, it's from Steady Garage. I got this bike when it was brand new, um, so there wasn't too much available. I think there's a lot more options available in terms of parts. So if you're looking for an integrated taillight, you can search multiple ones. Um, that's the one that I went with. Works okay. Could be better, but I mean, last but not least, I would say I got these um, stickers, the decals and stuff, red. Because stock, I think they're usually gray. Uh, you can see just a residual a little bit there. Then clean it perfectly. But these turned out amazing. Usually the Grom is right there. But I didn't like that on the lighter gray. Plus this one is a little bit bigger. Or I think it's the same size. But it looked better on this fairing piece than a little bit upper. So that's what I did with the, to match the black and red. And then I added red rim tape. I don't know if you call that mod, but yeah heck well i think that's pretty much it for this build definitely pretty much all that i've done to this bike it just accelerates a lot better with that um sprocket the little top speed test right here since it doesn't really break the speed limit there's acceleration that I've gotten with is probably I think it was like 64 65 I'm 5'6 about 150 but anyways that's pretty much it for this video if you like this video make sure to subscribe like comment all that fun stuff and I'll catch you on the next one later